Um, this message is called The Power of a Transformed Mind. We started there a few weeks ago talking about this crazy possibility that we can change the way we think. I love this message because so often I want to be able to put somebody else or something else on the hook. I want to be able to say it's because of them. It's because of that person. It's because of that situation. It's because of, you know, that season of my life. That's why things are the way they are. But God is saying today, you have the power to change the way you think. You may not be able to go back and change the way everybody else thought. Might not be able to change the circumstances, but you can change the way that you think. And, you, and this is the most powerful thing about you. Because our lives are not the sum total of the things we've done. The things we've done are the sum total of the ways we've thought. That's why God said, don't be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world. In other words, don't try to fit in to the cookie cutter mold of what the world is telling you. He said, don't be conformed any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed. This is what God is thinking about for your life. He's thinking about metamorphosis. He's thinking about you becoming a brand new person. He said, be transformed. How? By working harder? By trying harder, by getting in a program, by going through a system, by showing up at a thing. No, be transformed, the Word of God says, by the renewing of your mind. In other words, we have the cap capacity and possibility in Christ to change the way that we think. And today God is going to put a truth in front of you that is not going to be a new truth for most of us, but... If it becomes your truth today, then everything is possible in your life. It's a little bit like being on the plane train at the airport. Are there any airport people in the house today? Anybody know the plane train? It's two kind of people get on the plane train. There's the, uh, the nervous planners and the go with the flow people. You know them? And I'm talking about Atlantans. If you're not from Atlanta, then God bless you on the plane train. Uh, we were helping a guy Friday, you know, and he, uh, he didn't speak English and we didn't speak uh, his language, but we were helping him. He was going to get off on tea and we were going to make sure that was going to happen. The, the go with the flow people get to the airport and they're just in the flow. They know exactly where they're going. They know where TSA pre-check line is. They know how to go down the line. They're doing email. They're, got, they're doing work. They're talking to people. They know where to go down the escalator. They know how to get on the train. They know they're going out of B11. They know that's the second stop on the train. So they don't even look up on the first stop. It's like, this is not my stop. My second stop, this, excuse me, this is my stop. They, not because it said B on the thing. They just knew where they were going. There are other people in your family, and they're like, uh, two days before, what gate are we going out of? <laughs> At the airport. What's the gate again? Still B11? I'm, I'm updating, just checking in case they change the gate, looking at all the monitors going by, making sure they haven't changed the gate. It's still B11. We're here three hours early in case it's not. So it's going to work out either way. But then they're on the train. It, it's, it's A. We're at A now. We're not at A. We're at B. We're B. We're the next one. We're, we're, we're B11. B, uh, oh, it's B, this is us right here. B. And you're like, we know it's B11. Got people in in your family, probably on both sides of that equation, don't you? Don't you love it? And when the door opens and it's time for you to step out, you step out. When your trip ends and you arrive back in Atlanta, you get on the train at F or E or D if you're flying to cheapos or C or <laughs> B or a, if you're hardcore, Delta, T, if you're American. And then there's baggage claim. That's where you get off. Everyone gets off at baggage claim. But I learned you don't have to. 
If you were lost in la-la land or, or too busy responding to an important email and didn't realize that everyone got off, or maybe it wasn't a busy time of day and maybe you were one of the few people getting off at baggage claim and you just didn't notice it and the doors open and then they close, guess what? You're going to go around again on the train and very soon, you, some of you are nodding like I've done this, you will very soon have people getting on the train with all their stuff heading out to their flights. Your trip ended, but now you are on with the people whose trip is now just beginning. And I believe that today in this gathering, there are people who have been riding the train for a long, long time. And God wants to speak today. He wants to reveal today. He wants to get through to you today so that you can know there are a lot of things that you've been thinking that are not in the renewed mind. And when the door opens at some point today, you will have the power through Jesus Christ to step off the train into a brand new life that God has for you. And you'll know when the doors open which door today is for you. And I believe at the heart of it all is the cross of Jesus Christ. That's the part I said earlier that a lot of us have heard about. But the cross, I don't know if you know this or not, the cross is still speaking. But some of us, even though for 2,000 years the cross has been speaking, and in your case for 27 years the cross has been speaking, you still haven't heard it. Somehow, I don't know, God hasn't gotten through to you yet. He, it hasn't been clear enough, personal enough, powerful enough, revealed enough to you that his story became your story. See, that's, that's the goal of the Christian life. When his story, which is history, becomes my story, that's mystery. And when history becomes mystery, things change. When information becomes revelation, what is true becomes my truth. And when it becomes my truth, my life begins to change based on the truth because the truth became my truth when information became revelation. And I'm telling you, there's a story. And in that story, the Son of God gave his life for you. It's history. But it's only powerful when it becomes mystery, when somehow his story becomes my story. And now I realize because of the finished work of Jesus, I can step into a brand new way of life. Today is terminating day for some of the lies that the enemy has been speaking over you. I love this text. It's in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. And I'd love to read the whole chapter. Don't freak out too much. It's only 16 verses. <laughs> and there are a few obvious amen places. And I would love to, to not have to call for them. So they're, they're very obvious. Everyone will know them when they arrive. And I'm telling you, this is just incredibly powerful stuff. Paul is writing to believers in Corinth. For a little context, Corinth was a city that was upside down politically, philosophically, morally, culturally, just completely upside down. And Paul is speaking in to the believers there, and he says, when I came to you, brothers, I did not come with eloquence or superior wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved, this is going to be the verse we're going to circle today, to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. I came to you in weakness and fear and with much trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power.
power so that your faith might not rest on men's wisdom, but on God's power. We do, however, speak a message of wisdom among the mature, but not the wisdom of this age or of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. No, we speak of God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden and that God destined for our glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age understood it, for if they had they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. However, as it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed it to us by his spirit. That was one of the places. The Spirit searches all things, even the deep things of God. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the man's spirit within him? In the same way, no one knows the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. We have not received the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we may understand what God has freely given us. Us. This is what we speak, not in words taught us by human wisdom, but in words taught by the Spirit, expressing spiritual truths in spiritual words. The man without the Spirit does not accept the things that come from the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him. And he cannot understand them because they are spiritually discerned. The spiritual man makes judgments about all things, but he himself is not subject to any man's judgment. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ We have the mind of Christ. We have the capacity to not be molded into the pattern of the world's way of thinking, but to be transformed by the renewing of our thinking into God's way of thinking. Because we're not left to ourselves to discern we have the mind of Christ. We have a true north, and that true north is the cross of Christ. He said, I have determined to know nothing among you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. That is my true north, Paul was saying. I want us to try something. We're a little mid-talk here, and we're going to get a little interactive as the message winds down today. So could we just stand together? If, if you're at home, please, and I can't help you really at home with this, but if you're at 515 or Cumberland, I'll help you. I would love for you, just because you're standing and you have the, the capability, I know we have directionally challenged people in the house and directionally very confident people in the house right now. We throw me in the woods with a bear, and I'll find my way, you know, wherever. Uh, and then we got other people who are like, you know, don't know how to back out of their driveway. So it's a lot, <laughs> lot of things going on here. But I would love for you, since we're talking about True North today, just if you would, to just point boldly now to, to direct north, okay? So just go for it. Um, we got people looking around. Uh, nobody, no phones. I don't want any phones. I don't want any. Uh, we got a marital, uh, marital issue going on right here. We've got a very confident person. We've got someone who says, I have no clue. We have uh, people at 515. I don't know what you're thinking. Okay, at 515, I need someone on stage right now, by the way. Uh, not a volunteer, not just anybody, but Brad or someone. I need you on stage right now because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to help us, okay? Look where people are pointing. We've got people pointing. We've got people pointing all kinds of places. 
uh, to north. Okay, I have a compass on my phone, and I'm going to uh, give us the lowdown right now. Um, Grant, will you come just back me up on this? Uh, I, I don't want people to... We, we're going to get two compasses going here because sometimes, you know, your phone doesn't know exactly where you are. Okay. Mine's going a little bit haywire this time. So I don't know what's going on, but I think you're, that's yeah. right on it yeah. because we checked it. Okay, you ready? Uh, 515, they'll help you know because I don't know which way the building's sitting at 515, okay? <laughs> Cumberland people, true north. Yeah. Okay, you can sit down. Thank you so much. Beautiful and amazing. That's why this message today is called True North, or optional title be The Power of the Mind Fixed on the Cross of Christ. The redeemed mind is a mind that is fixed fixed on the cross of Christ. It's not a one-time event. It's not a Good Friday story. It's not an Easter weekend thing. It's not a symbol of faith. It's not a, I made that decision when I was younger in life. The renewed mind is the mind fixed on the cross of Christ. True north. I don't know if you know, but in earlier times, sailors would find their way along in the night because of a star called Polaris. Does anybody know this star? It's a close-up of Polaris. You can find Polaris in the Little Dipper, and if you don't know the difference between the Big Dipper and the Little Dipper, the Big Dipper is the one with the Big Dipper, and the Little Dipper <laughs> is the one with the Little Dipper. And on the end of the Little Dipper is Polaris, that star right up there. Polaris is also called the North Star. Why is it called the North Star? Because it is situated above the celestial axis of the Earth. So the Earth obviously is rotating on an axis, and celestially above that axis is where Polaris is in the sky. So that as you know, the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. The stars also rise in the east and set in the west because the world that we live on is spinning. So if you were to take a time-lapse photograph of the night sky, it would look like this, with stars rising in the east and setting in the west, except for one star that you can see in the center. That star is Polaris, because Polaris is above the celestial axis of the earth, above celestial north pole. And so, as the stars swirl through the sky in the time lapse of the evening, true north is there. So for life, where is your true north? And Paul is saying, for me, it's Christ and Christ crucified. My true north, no matter what is swirling in my life, is Jesus Christ and the cross of Jesus Christ. The renewed mind is a mind that is set on the cross of Christ. It is the place that trumps feelings, accusation, guilt, circumstances, failure, wrong, and even death is trumped at the cross of Jesus Christ. With that cross, of course, <clears throat> we're adding in and understanding the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And I believe today God wants to speak from the cross. Because his grace is still speaking. His cross is still speaking. 
And I believe that he wants to speak it in a way today that you realize, oh my word, the doors just opened on the plane train. And I can get off by the grace of God. And I can walk in a brand new life. There are a few ways I believe God wants to speak specifically into stories today. And if he speaks into your story, could I encourage you to respond to that? I, I know it's not normal for us at church, and it's not even normal in a, in a morning setting necessarily. And maybe you're here with friends or family or a guest or a coworker or a classmate. But I believe in the next few minutes, as these statements come from the cross, they're going to land on people. And if one lands on you, I would love it if we got out of seminar mode. Like we're, we're all in our seats and there's some dude up here doing a lecture. And we all got into family mode that we're all here with God and God is speaking into all of our stories. And so instead of at the end having a big moment where everybody comes down to the front or there's some kind of response or we all lift a hand, I just would love to see both at 515 or in your house or here at Cumberland, no matter where you're sitting, at some point, any point, if God speaks to you and the doors open and you go, I am getting revelation right now about my future, I want to encourage you just to stand up. You can stand up for 30 seconds, 10 seconds, a minute. You can stand up for the rest of the talk. You can stand up with your Bible and your journal and keep taking notes if you want to. No one's going to applaud. Nobody's going to recognize. So it's not going to be about a thing. It's just you letting everybody around you know God just landed on me with that. And I'm just going to stand up in that as a way of letting people know the doors just open on a train. I've been riding around in a circle for a long, long time, and I'm, I'm going to step off the train today. And I believe there's something powerful in that. There's something powerful in that of saying God's speaking and I'm, I'm receiving. I believe the first thing he wants to speak over people from the cross today is this. When my wounds are clouding my belief that God cares. The cross is my true north. I know we started with kind of a heavy one. But when my pain, the wounds that either I have inflicted on myself or the wound that has been inflicted on me by someone else has begun to cloud get in the way of my belief, because I had a belief that God cared, but now I'm not so sure anymore. I had this framework that God cares about me, but now I'm sort of wrestling with the question, if God really cared about me, then how did this possibly happen? And I need, in the swirl of all the pain and confusion, I need a true north today. And my true north is being renewed to the cross of Jesus Christ. You say, well, what about the cross of Jesus Christ can speak to me in my pain and in my wound? This truth from Isaiah talking about the suffering son of man, Jesus Christ. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him, and by his wounds we are healed. It doesn't make the pain any less. It just allows me to know that God still cares. How can I know? That God, is this in not one person so far has stood? So I don't know if we're not sure if we want to stand today or if it's just too much to do. But if there's been a question in the pain, if God cares, then what we can see in the cross is that in the pain, God cared. 
In fact, how God cared was in the pain. The way God cared was in the pain. And in this broken world, there's going to be a lot of things that go sideways. But God has the power to heal every single wound in my life through the finished work of Jesus Christ. When the swirl comes, I have a true north and it's not my feelings and it's not a whole bunch of people going, I think it's that way. Well, I think it's that way. I think it's over here, over there, over there, over there. I have a compass in my life and it's called the cross of Christ. And I have resolved to know nothing except Jesus and him crucified. I believe God wants to speak over people today. When my loss, and I don't know what that loss is, is undermining my trust in God's goodness. The cross is my true north. In other words, when what I held dear went out in the tide and I began to question, is God really good? I needed somewhere to renew my mind to in the swirl. And I found it in the cross of Jesus Christ where he lost everything because he is good. I don't know if you've ever thought about this or not, but God has buried a child and he didn't bury the child because he wasn't good. He buried the child for your good. And so he knows about loss. And when the feelings and the swirl say, hey, if God was good, that would have never happened. If God was good, that would have never happened. If God was good, that would have never happened. But somehow the cross reminds you that that happened because God is good. And I can't explain it. It doesn't, again, restore things. I can't go back in time, but I do know in the middle of it that there's a true north in my life to renew my mind to, to keep renewing my mind to. My father is good. My father gave his son. My, his son gave it all. In loss was my gain. In death was my life. When it was all lost, that's when it was all found for me. The doors are open today. And I'm able to step off and say, I'm stepping into the goodness of God, even in the loss in my life. When my circumstances, I believe God is speaking this over somebody, are obscuring my confidence that God is in control, the cross is my true north. In other words, when, when all the crazy around me right now is starting to obscure my confidence that I had in my life that there was a sovereign God who had a plan for all of this. But now because of my circumstances, all that is hanging by a thread. I'm telling you, in that moment, you have a true north. And the true north is the cross of Jesus Christ. And here's one thing I'll tell you about the cross of Jesus Christ. It was ugly. It was awful. It was painful. It was tragic. But In that moment, God was as much or more in control than he's ever been in life. He was running governments. He was running the emperor. He was running the political process, the religious rulers. He was running the mob. In the courtyard, he was running 
all of it that day, and it looked completely like everything had gone haywire and God had lost control, but in fact, God was very much in control doing the one thing he had intended to do from the garden, which was to make a way for you and me to come back to God. And I don't know what your circumstance is today, but I know where True North is today. I believe he's speaking this over somebody today. When my opinion of me is drowning out God's opinion of me, the cross is my true north. Oh, some of you, come on. You have been riding this train for years. I'm not good enough. I don't measure up. I'll never be loved by God. I'll never really be used by God in a significant way. My life doesn't matter. I, I, I'm not one of those people. And you've been riding the train, and the door's open, and you're like, hmm, I'm going to stay on the train. And the door's open, and you stay on the train, and the cross is speaking, and, and God is speaking, but somehow whatever he's saying is not working. The doors are opening today, and you can step off the train and say, I am what the cross says I am. I am. I am loved. I am chosen. I am forgiven. I am accepted. I am included. I am in Christ holy. I am a son. I am a daughter. I belong to God. And I'm going to let his opinion of me through true north trump my opinion of me. I got true north. I got true north. When enemy accusation, is this anyone? It's corrupting my belief in God's grace. The cross is true north. You watch when this gathering ends, how fast the accuser is in your car. You go, oh, you felt a little something at church today? Nah. You get back on the train. Watch out, trying to trip me up. Or it was just me being clumsy. Oh, wasn't it great? All the people were standing and everybody was clapping and you, know, you felt a little something today at church. Get back on the train. You are going to carry the shame he's going to tell you until I tell you you can't carry it anymore. I will play this video every day. I will play this audio recording every day. I will remind you of your failure every single day. Don't you worry. That feeling that you had at church, that's gonna be fleeting, but I'll be here tomorrow. And I'll remind you again that you don't deserve anything from God. And you're gonna carry this rock and carry this burden and carry this load and carry this guilt. This guilt trip is literally a guilt trip. And you're gonna see other people coming and going on their flights, but not you. You're going to see, you're going to watch other people going to their destination, but not you. You're going to see them collecting their belongings and getting in a car with a friend and driving off, but not you. You, my friend, are going to carry this until I tell, tell you you're not going to carry it anymore. And I'm telling you, if you have information, you're just going to get back on the train. But if you've got revelation, he's done. Right now, you're done. But if you can get revelation, he's done. It's not a game. 
it's not a hype, it's not a gimmick, it's not some churchy slogan. It's true north. A man bled and died for you. The innocent son of God took on shame and guilt for you. All of us like sheep have gone astray, but the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all. That's his story. Is it my story? That's information, but is it revelation? Because when it becomes revelation, you can say what Paul wrote to the church in Colossae that he, God, has taken the certificate of debt that was written against us, and he has canceled it by nailing it to the cross of Christ. It is finished. And when the accuser comes and says, I'm going to remind you of what you have done, you say, hallelujah. Let's do that together. Play the audio clip again. It's nailed to the cross of Jesus Christ. Remind me of the failure again. It's nailed to the cross of Jesus Christ. All of it is on the cross. All of it, past, present, and future, is nailed to the cross of Christ. Hallelujah. And by the time you turn around, the accuser is gone, and he's at the next person on the train. Do you have information or revelation? I don't know what you're talking about. Great. You, my friend, don't deserve anything from God. Don't even think about it. And if you got information, can you see yourself right now just going by? People can see you through the glass, but you're just going around in a circle. And today the door is open and the cross is speaking and his grace is enough. already loved. Do you know that song? I'm already what? Chosen. I know who I am. I know what you've spoken. I'm already loved more than I could imagine. And that is That, my friend, is enough. Just a couple more, we'll close. God's speaking this over anybody today. When my current state is overshadowing my faith in God's future plan, the cross is my true north. I had a plan, I had a dream, but that's all gone now. And it's starting to eat away at my faith that God really does have a plan for my life. But I got true north, and I know that the worst day of all is the day we now call good. I know that Jesus died, but God still had a plan for Jesus. Jesus was sealed in a tomb, but God still had a plan for Jesus. The whole time, God still How do you know? Oh, because my feelings are just really affirming that right now. No, because I got true north. And lastly, this one would be a little more difficult for someone to stand up into, but powerful. When the allure of temporary pleasure
is calling louder than the invitation to eternal riches. The cross is my true north. There were soldiers so blinded, all they could think about was throwing dice to get the robe. <clears throat> when the Son of God was speaking to a man saying, today you'll be with me in paradise. And I wonder, is there anybody in the house today? And all you can think about is just rolling the dice to get the robe when the Son of God is inviting you into eternal purpose, eternal riches, eternal life. How do you know that? The world telling you that? Is the screen telling you that? Is your flesh telling you that? No. I figured out which way true north is. And the cross is still speaking. Paul said it this way. He said, may I never boast. God, what a phrase. Except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world.